Hey everyone, James with TFB TV here at Rifle Dynamics headquarters just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada with my buddy Austin. You guys are about to get a tour of perhaps one of the most sophisticated and well-known boutique manufacturers in the AK industry, Rifle Dynamics. Austin, how long have you guys been at this? Pop quiz. Close to about 2007 is when we started. Okay. Um, I personally, I've been here about two years, uh, but we've been in the game for a hot minute. And you guys have expanded from your original footprint that was here. You started in this shop, right? Or? Yes, uh, we actually started. So this is one of our six units. We started in one single unit, which was everything. And over the course of the past few years, we have had the opportunity to expand even more to the full six units that we have now. I can't wait to see it. Let's go. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's follow the path of a Rifle Dynamics AK, start to finish. Where do we start with a Rifle Dynamics AK? So first things first, we start right here. This is gonna be our warehousing area. So this is where we get the invoice set up from the order. And then my guy, Jacob, will normally come through here. We take a bin, we get all the subsequent parts that we need for each build, put it into the bin. And that's also where we go through quality check, make sure that the parts that we're looking at are good and up to our standards. Once they leave here, they'll get set onto racks over here and start moving into the shop. Am I allowed to ask where you get your parts from? I mean, you guys get them from all over. Basically, we're using commercially available military kits. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's new production, we're using commercially available uh, military spec kits from Poland, and then otherwise we're using military surplus. The price mostly comes from the amount of work that we put into them. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, no matter what rifle you get, there's a lot of work that we put in to hand build every firearm that comes out of our shop. And that's like a great organic segue. It's almost like we have the scripted. We don't, we really don't. But let's see where the work gets put in. Take me so. to the next station here. The shop, where the bulk of the work gets done. Oh uh, yeah, you, you know it's a shop when you see surly dudes like this in here. I could tell <laughs> I was walking into a shop. We have Titus here, this is our riveter. This is where the whole process starts. He'll take each kit, make sure they get riveted up. How important is this step? How critical are the rivets? This is the most important. Other than headspace, this is the basis of the gun. If your rivets aren't right, your gun will fall apart. The All the recoil and beating of the gun is done in this area. So if you don't have good rivets, you won't have a solid gun. Once they go from riveting, they go into that rack over there where they start the population process, which is where we have Adam hiding over there in the corner. He does most of our population, which is our head spacing, um, basically getting the rear sight tower set in place. Anything that happen happens to the barrel pretty much gets done there. Uh -huh. And we're gonna put in our go gauge into the chamber and we're gonna press in on it and we want it to accept the go gauge. And it accepts it all the way. It's the, the bulk carrier is hitting the trunnion. So here's the no go gauge and we're gonna push it and it does not right. accept. So this is a safe barrel when we pin it to fire. This is gonna be a, a well head spaced gun. Once he's done with it, it comes over here into our assembly area, which is where it gets put together at one of our assembly stations. Now, all of our guys are multi-trained, so it's, I do a lot of the assembly, Titus does all of our riveting, as well as he hops in with assembly. Adam is our main population guy, but he will also hop in on assembly, and any mm. one of us can interchange and hop in in one, any one area that may need extra work. How many guys do you have doing assembly? Right now, set as their main job one, and that would be me. Okay. Um, but we all hop in at times, depending on where we need the help. Like this week, we're getting heavy into assembly, so we're all gonna shift gear into all pretty much doing assembly. If it's popping, absolutely blowing up, you guys have how many people in here doing assembly at any given point in time? If we're really, really pushing heavy, yeah. three to four. To get a core AK assembled, how much are we talking in man hours? Somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10, okay. if not more. Okay. I know that we just did some logging on that and it's usually about eight to 10 hours. I, I cannot believe how labor intensive that is. I mean, I, I would think that, especially you guys with your experience, I thought you were gonna say, oh, you know, we do it 90 minutes, 
watch a couple days of our lives, make a snack. You can definitely pump out a gun really, really quick if you want to. The difference is how you want it to fit and how you want it to run. Because mm -hmm. you could absolutely, even with our tooling here, we could build a gun in maybe three hours, mm -hmm. start to finish. But it's gonna be rough, it's not gonna feel good. There's a That's lot what of- what I told my wife about her marriage. Sorry, I had to do that. Go, awesome, <laughs> continue. A lot of it really comes down to the hand fitting of the components. Because again, an AK isn't like an AR. It doesn't just slap together. You right. have to make everything work together. So it's a lot of the hand fitting the components, a lot of the things we polish the rails, we polish the bolt carriers that way. Everything will fit together and glide together smoothly. Mm -hmm. And that way you have a nice recoil impulse. Everything feels good. And that also helps stop a lot of the teething issues that may have on the back end of actually getting a gun to work. Austin, explain what we are about to see here. So here we see Adam, my population guy, is going to go ahead and drill the front trunnion and barrel for a new barrel pin. So this is after he's already gone through and checked headspace on this trunnion, made sure that it is in spec, and he's gonna go ahead and upsize the existing barrel pin to a larger size so that it will hold that barrel in place to keep it nice and secure. Why would you upsize? You could go to the exact size that it was, but you have some instances where they, it being surplus components, they didn't necessarily drill it 100% straight. Mm -hmm. So just to err on the side of caution, we upsize so that we have a little bit more wiggle room to correctly get a full contact on the pin between the barrel and the trunnion. Is it safe to say that you spend a significant amount of hours actually refining surplus kits that weren't maybe done to the rifle dynamic spec? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of our time is spent on cleanup. It's a real mixed bag. Because uh -huh. you can get, like we primarily use Romanian parts. And Romanian parts you can get really, really good stuff and then you can get really, really crap stuff. And it's just a matter of luck of the draw what you get in each set. And it's, Hungarian is a weird one because they're very weird specs. We generally don't work on them because they don't mesh too well with any other country's mm -hmm. components. Um, but it's, it's a real mixed bag because you can get really, really good stuff out of anywhere and you can get really, really bad stuff out of anywhere. It's a matter of what condition that kit is in because you can get rusty, baked and cosmically crap from anywhere. Going so we've way. done assembly. Are we moving out of assembly now? Yes, we're going to start moving out of assembly. So. Over here, there's not a whole lot more to look at, but just this would be the next step. So after it goes from assembly, it would come into this area right here. And this is where our suppressor alignment will be. Mm -hmm. So we have a reinforced mag to help us for torquing down all those muzzle devices, but mm -hmm. starts here where we can get your muzzle device aligned. We get it suppressor aligned. So we check it with a rod and whatever suppressor you select. That, that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, that's- Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Pretty true. <laughs> And then also we would use our lathe if necessary to fine tune the device to time correctly. Then, Concentricity and timing, if I can interrupt. Absolutely. Th those are things that are, that are very important for the AK platform, why? Most of the barrels that you see aren't gonna be concentric. Um, and timing, it's a matter of where you wanna set it, because you can set it by shims and we actually do it by- The muzzle shims. device. Correct. Right. Timing the muzzle device. You can set it by shims, which is the way a lot of places do it. We personally aren't fans of how that looks. Oh, it looks like so, shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we'll actually turn down the device, shave a little bit off the rear end so that it will time correctly with just the device and the shoulder to the barrel. Before we had this all built and everything, we kind of timed it on a bare barrel, just a barrel. Um, and the way we do it here so that we don't have to use any shims, we just take the uh, muzzle device and put it in the lathe and turn down the backside of the muzzle device to time it pr uh, properly. So you can see that the, the hole where it's gonna need to be at the very bottom is about an eighth of a turn away. That's mm -hmm. pretty much where you wanna start at because then that'll give you enough to really get it on Torque there nice and there. good and yeah. tight. But those are things that you have to be very conscious of because an AK barrel profile is a little bit thinner than your standard AR barrel. So you have to be really, really on point because you don't have as much of a shoulder to work with. So you have to get it done perfectly the first time. So once it goes from here, once we have our muzzle device on and it's suppressor aligned, make sure we're not gonna get a baffle strike or anything like that. That's where we will bag it for test fire. So we'll throw it in a bag. We set them on a rack over there. And then that's where our owner, Mark, he personally test fires each and every firearm that we have go through the company. You kidding me? Absolutely, he tests every single gun. And it goes out, he takes it out to our 
a range that we partner with out here, Pro Gun Vegas. He will test it for function. He zeroes every firearm prior to it even leaving initial test fire, and he'll he will also suppress or tune it. So he will tune the gas block so that it will function both suppressed and unsuppressed and gets the eight to 10 foot ejection pattern that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And he puts his hands on every gun to make sure that it not only meets my standards, but also meets his standards. And he's something he's happy with putting the Rifle Dynamics name on. Austin, is this what the guns look like whenever they're done with assembly? Pretty much. Um, if we go by, by organization, this left side will be things waiting for suppressor alignment. And then most of this stuff on the middle and right is actually waiting to go into our refinish department. Okay, so and is that where we're going next? That would be the place. Prior to them going to refinish, we actually have this table here, which is where we put them through one of our first quality control checks. So this is our initial check. So we have one of our guys, Jordan, our painter, because he's mm. got the best eye for detail out of all of us. He comes through and he will notate anything on the gun that may look suspect or doesn't mm. look up to our standards or anything like that. Once that's done, uh, myself or my ops manager, Jeremy, will hands-on go through each gun and fix whatever issues we found. And that's where we'll correct everything. Once that's done, we sign off on it, and then it moves on to our refinish department. Okay, yeah, let's go right on in. We get to refinish the messy side of the whole thing. This is my refinish guy, Traven. Hey, Traven. Good to see you, man. And this is where the guns start. So first things first, they'll end up here. They'll end up in these racks. And then right on this table here is where Traven will first disassemble the firearm. Um, as he's going through the disassembly, he's doing our next quality control check is putting his eyes on everything, making sure that there's nothing that he finds suspect, everything works as it should, um, mag fitment, other things that we check along the way. He does the disassembly, pulling everything down to its core components, basically completely stripping the rifle. Then he will go through and anything that has had grease or oil put on it anywhere goes through our ultrasonic tanks to help clean them up, um, get everything off. Then they'll go into the rack over here where they're basically waiting to be blasted. You guys put everything together in the next room over and this son of a bitch takes it all apart. We bake all of our paint. So if there's anything hiding anywhere, it'll find out in the oven. But once it goes through there, it basically gets blasted in our blast cabinets here and everything that's gonna get painted is gonna be completely stripped down to bare metal. Um, anodizing goes away, parkerization, everything. We strip everything down to bare metal. Once it goes there, we move on to one of our first paint booths, right over here. And this is paint booth number one. And this does multiple things. So first things first is this is where Traven, after he blasts each firearm, he'll take it here and he will apply a rust preventative coating or a base layer, uh, something by KG Gun Coat called KFOS. Mm -hmm. And that's just a rust preventer and basically just inhibits anything happening in the gun. Right. As well as adding a protective layer in case the gun is gonna sit around a little bit waiting for paint. Last step, we go to where we began. Oh, and here we are. We start here in paint. So this is where after they're blasted, everything ends up here. This is where you get that nice matte silver finish. Here is where Jordan will do the bulk of our painting. And then once it has been painted, they'll sit in the oven for a couple hours to help cure that coating. Once that's done, they go into this rack right here where Jacob, my final assembler, will take the rifle and reassemble a painted product. Uh, they've gone to initial test fire once after the shop. Then once they come here, they get assembled and then they get oiled and then they go to a final test fire. Okay. So we reconfirm that everything lines up the way we want it to. We reconfirm that the gun will run because sometimes paint can add some obstacles in that path. And then once it goes to final test fire, they reconfirm zero where again, Mark puts his hands on every gun once again. Then they come back, they go into this rack right here getting ready for shipping. And then they go through our final quality control test where we have again, another person go through and do our final check where he just checks everything off, make sure all the components are as they, as deemed by the customer and that there are no imperfections in the paint. And then from there, it basically goes to Vince or shipping guy. Cheapest rifle dynamics AK I can get. It's gonna be either our 702 or our 703 starting in the $2,700 range. Ooh, depending on how you look at it. That's three times what you can get like a decent quality production, maybe commercial slash mil spec AK. Uh, so some people might say that for what you do here, it's a, a bargain. Some people might say, oh man, you know, I'd rather just get like an off the rack surplus gun or something like that. 
Austin, I know where you stand, but but tell everyone right now who just had a stroke when they heard twenty seven hundred dollars. Tell them you've already shown them, mm -hmm. but let's go ahead and put a bow on it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you do get what you pay for. There's a lot of man hours and a lot of time put behind each product that we push out, and we are very proud of that, as well as there's a lot of testing that we put behind every product we push. So every rifle has been test fired several times just to make sure it functions. So out of the box, you should have a zeroed and capable rifle. So this is going to be a 706. So basically what makes it different than a 702 or 703 is our rear trunnion right here. We're going to have a 1913 rear trunnion. That's basically what makes this a 706 rifle. So 14 and a half pin and weld with a silencer co ASR. Um, we have our RD SLR handguard on there. And then basically just this has gone through the whole process already. Oh yeah, and it's fantastic. Whoa. Everything you guys do down to the paint on the numbers on the, the rear sight, like everything is so crisp and clean. This is our Thunder Ranch exclusive. This is our Thunder Ranch Tiger Strike. And this is actually off of one of our build class students. Back in January, we did a build class partnering with Thunder Ranch. And this is just one of the custom paint jobs that we did for him, um, getting the Tiger Stripe with the green, the tan, the black all in there. That is absolutely gorgeous. Austin, before I let you go, you have to answer the question, best AK you guys make in your personal opinion. I don't want any objectivity. I want purely your opinion. What's the best AK you guys make? As we make right now, I'm going to have to say probably it's a toss-up between the 706 and the 506. Um, you get a lot of usability having that 1913 rear trend. You can throw whatever you want on there. Um, and it's a matter of if you want 762 or 545. I personally, I'm impartial to 762, a little bit easier to get a hold of. And I just like shooting at trash in the desert. So it doesn't really matter how much it costs. Of course you do. Typical AK guy answer. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> well, Austin, thanks again for the tour. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for watching. Stick around. We're going to be bringing you more from Rifle Dynamics and TFB TV.